Welcome back to Crafty Hints. I am so thankful that you joined me today. I have joined the Twine It Up Challenge with Fanny and Leonip. You will have to visit these ladies' channels. I'm going to link them below as well as a playlist of other DIYers that joined the challenge. Let's get to our first project. The first project, I used a couple types of rope or twine. I got these both at Walmart. Now I got this box and you can kind of see it did get snowed on while it was out on my porch waiting for me to grab it. But the first thing I did was take my glue gun and I just went over all the seams and glued them down and I glued the flaps down. Next I took this pillowcase from the Dollar Tree. I turned it inside out and I'm going to put the box inside it. Now I just slip that in there and then I wanted to get the seam at the center of the side. Kind of measure that up, make sure everything looks equal. Next what I'm going to do is just glue it around the edge. I did use a finger protector because that is a really hot glue gun. I did go to my other glue gun that's a little bit lower temp just because I've got a lot of touching there that I do and that's real thin fabric. So you just glue those edges and then when it has that extra little bulk on the side I just pinch that together and glued it over. That makes just a little pleat on the side to bring it all together. Pretty simple guys. Pinch that together with a little bit of glue, fold it over, glue it down. Now we're just going to turn this pillowcase right side out. Oh, first I should probably trim it down. So I found the center of the bottom of the box and I just cut extra. Now we'll turn it right side out. And I just tucked this inside. I did not glue it down or anything. I did put a little bit of glue so that that edge would sit just a little bit better. So pull it all down and look at your edges. Make sure you didn't miss anything. I took this edge and I just glued it down a little bit so that it matched up with the rest. And I'm going to start with this twine. So just a little bit of glue there to get it started. And I just keep doing that. And I'm going to just take this rope and go around the box. I would suggest a lower temp glue gun just because you're doing a lot of gluing and a lot of pressing down. I did end up using both glue guns. Just pressing this all the way around the box and I'm just going to put one line of this rope. Now I thought it made it just a little bit more decorative as I will put the black rope right up against this twine. Just making sure that's secure. And I, for, when I first started doing this, I did decide which side I wanted to be the front. And so all of the rope will start in the back. I also decided I kind of wanted to stagger where the rope started. So I started the other rope on the right side and I started the black rope on the left side, just so I didn't have a lot of seams all on the back in the same area. You can definitely do it whatever way you want, but I thought that might look best. So I just continued with this rope going all the way around. I think this black rope was a little bit easier to work with because it has a little bit of stretchiness to it. It's a real close up and personal shot there. I think this was called sisal rope. 
I thought I was close enough with the camera to show you what the two different types were, but I did get it at Walmart. It, I want to say it was around $6. But here I go with the other twine. And now I'm just going to continue that around the box for quite a while. Because I do want this to have that farmhouse look to it. So I thought that this twine would be the best way to go. Do you decorate your home with a farmhouse theme? Let me know down below. All right, if you are enjoying this video, I do hope that you will give it a like, a thumbs up, and hit that bell to subscribe and see more videos that I will have coming soon. All right, so we're gonna stop with the twine here and just make sure we get that good and secure. And now I'm going to start with that rope again. I think this gives it just a nice finished touch. Doesn't look like I just, you know, roped up a box. It looks a little bit more like a basket. Now, if you'd like to, you could definitely put handles on this with a couple rope handles, tie a couple knots and glue those on. Now there, I did want to point out that the inside of that black rope does have a foam core. So you can scoot back that fabric just a little bit and cut that foam core, cut it at an angle so that it lines up better with the other side of it. But then I just took a little bit of that extra fabric to cover up anything that might be showing. Now we have one more strip of twine to go around here. Pretty easy, right? And I think it comes out so nice. And there we are. I did think that needed just a little bit of something. So I grabbed these tags from the Dollar Tree and I decided I just wanted the black chalkboard part. I didn't want it to be a tag. So I cut that end off and I measured it to find where that center would be. I'm using my Artisto marker. It's just an acrylic paint. These chalkboard tags though, soaked up a little bit more paint than I expected them to. So I did go back over this a couple of times. Now at first, you see those two thumbtacks there. I thought I would just use that on each side of the word tissue or put four tacks in the corners. But with the size of this tag, it just didn't look quite right. Okay, now I took my heat gun. You could definitely take your blow dryer as well. And I just went over this basket, so to speak, and smoothed out any glue that you might be able to see. That's a good tip with any glue gun project that you have. You might wanna just run your hair dryer over it. That way it gets rid of those little glue strings and everything else. All right, so I just took my ruler, found the center, put a little bit of hot glue under there. And I decided to use some straight push pins. You know, just the fabric straight pins. And I used the white headed ones just to put it on there to give it a little more of a finishing touch. And that is truly about it. I straightened up the fabric and I'm going to put in two rolls of toilet paper or tissue, so to speak. And that's it. Here we are, it's in my restroom. All right, now we'll go to project two. Another twine it up project. So I got these three terracotta pots at the Dollar Tree. And 
as you can see, I had a little bit of paint out. So I was kind of in between projects here. So I painted these up. You can kind of take a peek at another project that's coming. Those little bunny eggs are sitting there and I had painted them white. So I painted these with different types not types, but techniques, I guess. Um, I did one solid white. I did that one with a few bare spots. And then the next one, I'm getting down to just about no paint. So that's what I'm gonna do with this one. I'm gonna leave even more spots and give it a little bit more of a distressed look. I thought that way I could use them several different ways. So I was deciding here which one would work with that succulent. I got that succulent at the Dollar Tree and now I'm gonna twine it up. Just a little bit of glue at the top. And this is, I think it was the one with a medium amount of paint. So it will have a few bare spots, but I'm gonna take a little bit of glue, go around that edge. Make sure we get that good and secure in the beginning so it gives us a good start. And I wrap it around a few times and just tag it down in places where it doesn't feel like it's sitting on top of the other rope. Are you all just getting ready for spring? Have you started decorating for spring? Put a flower down in the comment box if you're ready to start decorating for spring. It's getting kind of exciting. It has been sub-zero here for about two weeks, so I'm ready for some spring decor as well. Okay, just a couple more times around, and this pot is just about done. Thought I might be able to just bend that, but that stem is really thick. So I took off the tag, kind of measured it, and now I just want to cut off the extra so that it will sit right in the pot. It really wasn't as hard to cut as I thought it was going to be. All right, I want that to sit just a little bit better, so I got some floral foam and cut a little piece with a box knife. I, I don't go too deep on that. It cuts pretty easily. Now I'm going to cut it just a little bit shorter as I know it will be too tall. I want that succulent to sit down in there. And just push that down. To give it a little bit more of a finished look, I'm going to add some Spanish moss. So I press the succulent in and I think it's easiest to work with the Spanish moss just by cutting it off. So, and you want something underneath it, it is messy. Usually I'll do like a bin or something for this because it just gets messy, but I just left that wax paper there. I do like painting on wax paper. I think that's one of the easiest things to paint your projects on. And it's a cheap way to be able to just, you know, toss it after you're done. So just tuck that right underneath the leaves. You don't need to glue it at all between the succulent and the pot. It holds it right in place. It didn't move a bit. And this is just about done as well. I do appreciate you watching this video and hope that you will take a look at all of the others on the playlist. Here we are, it's in my restroom on this shelf. And I think it's the perfect accent that that corner needed. And then we have the tissue, so that twine will tie the two together. As I said before, thank you so much for joining me, and I do hope that we'll see you again. Thank you.